Regardless of a show's overall quality, some characters are destined to be squandered from time to time. Victims of behind-the-scenes mix-ups, contract disputes, or just plain bad writing. Often characters never get to live up to their glowing potential, either abandoned, forgotten, or outright killed before they could become what they were always meant to be. And this is your warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. So with that in mind, I'm Adam, this is What Culture, and here are 10 TV characters with the most wasted potential. Potential. Number 10. Captain Jojo, Star Trek Discovery Now when you get an esteemed actress like beloved Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh on a show, you're well within your rights to assume she's going to play a big role and stick around for the foreseeable, because who wouldn't want that? That wasn't the case this time around though. As Yeoh's return in Star Trek Discovery as Philippa Jojo, captain of doomed USS Starship Genzo, was a middling two-episode affair that ended with a noble death and nothing more. Yeoh returns as an alternate version of the character later on, which is fun but not the same. Despite giving a great performance, no surprises there, and serving as one of the finest additions to Discovery's opening two episodes, Yeoh was cut down before the series could really get moving, and Jojo, mourning but hopeful, brave and pragmatic was never allowed to become more than a glorified one-off. You can argue that Jojo's death was a necessary evil to sell the stakes of the coming drama and to make way for the show lead Michael Burnham, but Discovery made the captain too compelling to disappear so quickly. Number 9. James Dukes, Dexter in one of the most heated subplots of Dexter's first two seasons, Detective James Dokes finds himself drawn closer and closer to his colleague's murderous secret, which inevitably culminates in Dokes' death when he learns the truth. But did we really have to lose him so soon? As thrilling as this drama is, especially when you have actors Michael C. Hall and Eric King bringing so much dark humour to the situation, the main issue with the Dokes Dexter showdown is that it starts as a slow burn, but ends with a rushed experience explosion of action to tidy everything up ready for season 3. Given the depth of animosity and tension between the two men, it would have been brilliant to see Dokes stick around, his quest for answers perhaps slowed down so it could be stretched further over more seasons of the show. The character's ill-timed death is even more egregious when you note he survives in the books albeit with a much nastier eventful fate. There was still some story to play with here, but the whole thing was tossed aside a bit too quickly. Number 8. Catelyn Stark, Game of Thrones Of all the members of the doomed Stark family, Catelyn always felt the most out of place, sidelined as a passive passenger to her husband and son's journeys. Game of Thrones had plenty of wasted characters, but Catelyn was one of the first to properly suffer from the show's epic scope. She's fierce and strong, and Michelle Fairley was tremendous in the role with what little she had. That final scene, am I right? But watching the show again serves as a stark reminder, no pun intended, that she always struggled to break through. Worse still, of course, was the show's decision to not follow the books and resurrect Catelyn as Lady Stoneheart, an undead hooded assassin seeking revenge for her death and for the other victims of the Red Wedding. When Catelyn dies, she stays dead, which seems odd given the less desirable creative leaps the show took after the fact. Catelyn was merciful and compelling enough, but never more than surface right until the end. And the fact that she never returned in her most exciting guise remains a baffling disappointment in a show with many. Number 7. Jerome Velasca, Gotham Despite being the most exciting and promising addition to the wild crime drama Gotham, Jerome Velasco was used too sparingly to leave a dent as large as he should have. Played with twisted glee by Cameron Monaghan, who also plays his evil but slightly less intriguing twin Jeremiah, Jerome's murderous appetite, nihilism, and captivating charisma injected Gotham with an energy it sorely lacked in his absence. You didn't know where he was going next, sometimes on a line-to-line -line basis. Still, despite his obvious Obvious virtues and audience popularity, Jerome's sporadic appearances and twisty plots always left him feeling underused and half forgotten, disappearing and awkwardly reappearing at a moment's notice. Never a main character, Monaghan's performance alone was case enough to make Jerome a bigger aspect of the series, but it never came to pass. Instead, we got several seasons of The Riddler and The Penguin, who were never able to match the verve Jerome brought to the screen, though those two were fine in their own way. Number 6. Lexa, The 100 The 100 ran for far, far too long and suffered some major setbacks despite some creative highs earlier on. 
but none so tumultuous as when the riders decided to kill off fan favourite warrior Lexa with a stray bullet and little reason. A profoundly fascinating character, Lexa's bravery and selflessness as a leader, as well as her loving relationship with series lead Clark, made her a woman of limitless potential and depth. Depth, it should be said, the show wasn't close to fully uncovering when it so offhandedly shot her down. The kind of beloved character whose fate massively impacts their show, Lexa's untimely end was met with widespread upset from audiences and critics alike, especially considering her status as one of TV's most compelling LGBTQ plus icons. Of course, the writers obviously realised the errors of their ways, bringing her back for a guest spot in the 100's otherwise forgettable finale. But Alicia Debnam Carey's return did little to fix the damage done. Lexa had so much to give, and it was taken from her due to a blatant, lazy attempt to shock for the sake of it. And while I've got you, make sure you let us know down in the comments who your choice of TV character is from your favourite show who had the most wasted potential. I can't wait to check them out. And while you're there, you know the usual. Give us a like and a subscribe. Alright, now back to the list. Number 5. Dala, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel Dala is the first character we ever see or hear in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, playing the stereotypical blonde damsel who, in a then-shocking twist, is revealed to be a vampire. Her importance in the Buffy canon doesn't end there, though. The sire of infamous vampire Angel, it could be argued Dala almost single-handedly set some of the biggest stories of the franchise in motion. Only she's never treated as more than this, a plot device for the bigger male characters to suffer and grow. In Buffy, Dala lasts a few episodes before before Angel kills her, and when she returns for the Buffy spin-off, her new life as a human never feels like anything more than an attempt to torture her former lover, and move the plot rather than her character. For someone with so much backstory and critical importance to the events around her, Dala was entertaining and tragically empathetic for a soulless killer. But every time she looked poised to become something outside of Angel's influence, the show was pulled back and used her only to move his story along. This is especially apparent in Angel's Season 3 episode, lullaby when Dala sacrifices herself for the birth of her and Angel's son. Oh boy, I am still not over that episode. Number 4. Cottonmouth Luke Cage Two-time Oscar winner Mahershala Ali is only in the first seven episodes of Luke Cage before his character, the godfather-like supervillain Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes, is killed. Funnily enough, these seven episodes are also the show's best. A looming threat to rival that of fellow Marble Foils Kingpin and Kilgrave, Cottonmouth was calculating and cold. Sure, money and fear would buy him the power he craved, and the results of his greed made him a formidably entertaining foe, and by extension, the best aspect of a show with many highs. It was a shock then when the ruthless arms dealer was killed in Luke Cage's seventh episode by his cousin Mariah. The show never recovered from the vacuum his death left. Left. And though Mariah herself was a magnificent villain, she never quite matched the steely, unpredictable nature of Cottonmouth's evil. Ali may have known the death was coming, but audiences sure didn't. And it's safe to say everyone would have loved to see him stick around a little bit longer. Ah, what could have been? Number 3. Barris Offy, Star Wars The Clone Wars Star Wars The Clone Wars does an incredible job of filling in the gaps not just between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, but across the entire movie canon, often diving deep on its subjects with meticulous detail. Throughout the show, we learn about Maul's miraculous return, the origins of Order 66, the depth of Anakin and Padme's relationship, and the inner workings of the Jedi Council, with the results being utterly captivating. That's why the final fate of Jedi Padawan Barris Offy feels so frustrating, because whilst she starts the series as a competent, compassionate Jedi, she ends up betraying the Order further down the line. The vague, hand-waving execution of her turn to the dark side gives no real insight into her sudden personality change, and that's really a shame given the potential of seeing such a true champion of peace lose her way so dramatically and so tragically. Some added insight into Offie's fate and the flaws of the Jedi way that led her there would have been greatly appreciated, and probably very powerful indeed. Number 2. Isaac Leahy, Teen Wolf 
Throughout its six-season run, Team Wolf altered its cast lineup half a dozen times, with an even mix of welcome surprises and shock omissions. And Isaac Leahy's disappearance after the show's third season fits very firmly in the latter category. Initially an abused young man who tastes power for the first time in his life after being turned into a werewolf, Isaac started life as a circumstantial villain. But given enough time, that is, given a handful of near-death experiences and a variety of well-meaning new relationships, particularly with brief girlfriend Allison, Isaac's colours soon started to change shade, and it wasn't long before we were watching a conflicted antagonist become a bona fide good guy. A great source of comic relief given plenty of time to shine, Isaac seemed in position to become a main character after his exemplary season 3 arc. But he didn't. Instead, he left never to return or be mentioned again, and though Team Wolf did just fine without him, his presence and his potential with it was sorely missed. Number 1. Charlie Bradbury, Supernatural Outside of Sam and Dean Winchester, there were very few characters on Supernatural who stuck around for the long haul, the obvious exceptions being Castiel, Crowley, and Bobby Singer. But one every fan wishes had been given more time was Charlie Bradbury, first appearing in Season 7 as a hacker who helps the Winchesters face Big Bad Dick Roman, Charlie recurred sporadically for the next three seasons, often for one-off episode stints that were the highlight of their respective season, thanks to her easy sister-like rapport with the hunters, her happy geekiness, and infectious energy. An absolute ray of sunshine who lit up the Winchester's dreary lives, Charlie fit in so easily with the wider mythology of the show, becoming a hunter in her own right and using her skills to combat a wealth of childhood trauma. She could have easily joined them as a main fixture on the series and would have enriched it massively. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Charlie dies in the 10th season, and though an alternate Charlie turns up sparringly afterward, the original Charlie's absence was a major loss. Quirks and all, she should have been with the brothers through it all. But if Supernatural taught us anything, it's that God sure can be cruel.